Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Hi, and welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Today we radiate comfort with Erin Albright, who is the author of this just adorable children's book called Sassy's New Home about the death of a pet. The death of a pet is really hard for children to understand, uh, much less accept. And I feel like this new book is... um, it really explains it in such a way that it's it's touching. I know I cried when I read it, <laughs> and uh, it it I think it helps children and families a lot grieving the loss of a pet. And couldn't we all use a little bit more comfort these days? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Erin, for joining me. Yes, I'm excited to be here. And then you know it's an important top topic, and comfort right now is I think something we're all craving. So. Comfort is something I think we are all craving. We're all just, I just, I know I just want, sometimes just want my mom, you know? (laughs) I just want somebody to hug me and say, you know what? It's going to be okay. Agreed. Right. It is going to be okay. Um, Right now it just kind of stinks a little bit, but we will get through this together. But Sassy's New Home, can you tell me why you decided to write this book? So in 2000, so I am someone who has always loved dogs. So I had a dog growing up. And then when I bought my first house, yes, I was excited about the first house, but more so excited that I could finally get like my own dog. So I've always been a dog person. And so um, when my very first rescue dog that I'd gotten as as an adult, Max, passed away in 2015, I remember that my niece at the time was five and it was two weeks after my dog had passed away and she and I were at the pool and she's always been a sensitive kid. I myself am a little bit of a sensitive person, so I relate to her a lot. Anyway, whereas like the rest of the kids in her family had kind of moved on and nobody really focused or or thought about this. It was a couple weeks after Max had passed. She turned to me in the pool and she said, I'm so sorry, Auntie Erin, and I I don't want this to ever happen to anyone ever again. And I thought about it and I was like, I told her, something that is comforting to me, which is that it's okay. I'm okay. It's not, it's not Max's fault. It's not my fault. It's, it's part of life. And I feel like dogs are chapters in the book of my life. And I like to picture that, you know, my dog is in this place that has, you know, trees that have milk bones dangling from the trees. And there's just such a, such a happy place. And, and, you know, that's what I like to think about. And so I said, that brings me comfort. And so I told her that at the time, and then, I don't know, we went and splashed each other and did whatever we were doing, you know, just kind yeah. of, and, but it was one of those things that I started thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, her saying she doesn't want this to ever happen to anybody ever again, I, she has a dog that's 12 in her family, and so I was like, she doesn't understand it, and I thought more, and I thought, you know, that makes sense, her reaction, because if you think about it, kids... Let's say they're hearing about some, um, you know, people uh, like a hurricane coming through. Well, what do we do? We all send relief. We all try to do something. So kids are used to coming up with an action, you know, or or trying to comfort or or fix. I guess fix is a better word. Um, Sad scenarios. Right. And you can't fix this. It's inevitable. And you have to understand that. And she didn't understand that. And so... I told her that, you know, kind of talked to her about that. And I had already, you know, Mel- my best friend, Melanie, um, sh- I had already told her a little bit about this idea that I had, especially after talking to Leah and then other friends when their dogs had passed away, you know, it, it just was a helpful thing. We just, it was a conversation I had. It was just one of those things. And so I wrote, it down in 2017. So it took me a couple of years right. and I was like, okay, I'm going to write this down. This has been helpful enough to me and helpful enough to the kids in my life because, you know, that dog that Leah had, you know, that was 12 at the time, it passed away. And they said, you know what? This is just like Auntie Erin's book. 
you know, as, as there were more and more doctor's appointments, they were like, we need to cherish the time that we have with Faith was the name of the dog. And um, because, you know, she's not going to be here with us forever. Dogs don't live as long as people, which I talk about in the book. Right. And so anyway, so so that's kind of how it came to be. Um, and it's just one of those things. And I personally picture or I personally value in dogs, specifically dogs. I mean, the book is about a dog. Right. Um, they are the best greeters. They're so excited. I could go out you know, into the garage, have forgotten the garage door opener and have to just quickly come back in. And it's like, I've been gone for like a year and their tails are wagging. So personally, my thought is, okay, they don't live as long as us because they are the best greeters of all time. So they are the greeters in heaven and they're showing people around and making them feel welcome. And that's what comforts me. That's what I like to think about. So. Well, we like to think of our pets and our, you know, our companion animals having a job to do, doing that job well, yeah. having a role because they have roles in our family. That's so true. Right? There are yeah. comfort, there are friends, there are watchdogs. It's true. You know, they have a role for us. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you knew this about me, but I'm an animal communicator. Yes, I saw, I, I'm so fascinated. I love everything about that. Yes. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing. And um, dogs do, dogs especially like to have a job. So when people are having behavior problems with their dogs, I say, okay, well, let's find them a job. That is so true. They love to do that. And it can be watching for squirrels, barking when somebody comes. It can mm-hmm. be being a companion. So, so many things. And so it's just wonderful that you acknowledge that and give uh, Sassy a job to do as yeah. the official greeter. Yep. Um, it's, it's just lovely. It's so imaginative too. How, so how did you get this beautiful image of heaven for dogs? I, it's, it's just something that I had come up with myself personally. I am, <laughs> I am a creative person. I've always just sort of been that way. Um, yeah. I, I wrote when I was a kid, I was on yearbook when I was in high school and, and then I was, I originally went to Mizzou to do journalism. So writing and, and, creating was always something that I thought I would do. I ended up majoring in education and becoming a teacher. And then through the, you know, paths of life, I ended up eventually becoming a graphic designer. And so my love of creating, my love of kids and my love of dogs and design kind of all came together for this book so yeah it was a perfect storm it, it all came was. together yeah. I don't know if you've ever read the book A Prayer for Owen Meany it's one of my favorite books I have I yes love. and you think how random are all these things in this kid's life and then mm-hmm. at this one shining moment at the very end everything comes together yeah I tend to um I tend to love books I'm a book yeah. one too so that's why this is also perfect and right you know I've done a lot more audiobooks lately but I also love children's books being a te- former teacher I have a huge collection of children's books no doubt um as well as books that I just love to read for myself so and what grade did you teach I taught first first and second oh perfect yeah, yeah. oh this book is geared terrifically for first and second grade I, I, would, I would think that would be like kind of the the prime spot I mean I know mm. that some of the preschool kids they've really taken to it when they've had something like this happen in their family it's just comforting to hear it read from a parent Um, but yeah I think first second grade would be perfect Uh, you know and I did along the way through this process I met with a child therapist and she kind of helped me um, come up with recommendations because I get now asked a lot you know how do I help my kids you know with the death of a pet it's often the first death that a child has in their life so. Right, right. Oh, and it can be so devastating because mm-hmm. they're, you know, this, they're this fixture, fixture in your life. Yeah. They're every day, all day. And they're, they're comforting. I mean, speaking of radiating comfort, I don't know of anything that radiates comfort more <laughs> than a pet and the love that they give unconditionally. At the end of a long day, you just want to go home and snuggle with your dog yeah. or your cat. That's I'm true. bipetual. I have, we have two uh, cats and a dog. Aww. So, so you just go, want to go home and snuggle your pets. Yes, it's so true. You know, um, and also as an animal communicator and medium, I have visited with many family members in hospice, and I've seen their pets show up for them at the end. That is very meaningful to me. Um, I so. personally... My, so my grandmother passed away in 2010 in hospice, and so I have a soft spot right. for people who do that work. 
I volunteer doing meals at hospice because you want to give back when you've had that kind of experience. So um, I just, the fact that that is something that you've experienced that the, you know, the animals will make themselves present and kind of comforting in those times that I think that's amazing. Yeah. They want to walk them home, you know? Yeah. I'm going to start crying now. Well, that, I mean, I, I think that's so comforting. And again, I mean, that could be a book in and of itself. I mean, that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe we should write it. <laughs> I know. Because that, to me, is so comforting. Well, I often, like, I just always want to have pets in my life. So, and they are. They're chapters in the book of my life. They don't live, you know, right. as many years as I wish. Um, and so I kind of joke that in the end, I'm going to have all of their ashes. So I'm going to have all of yeah. these extra things. A little containers along, you know, for when I go and somebody's going to have to figure out like how to mix it all together or whatever, you know, um, be yeah. buried with them. In fact, um, yeah, you had a great explanation of how, um, dogs do not outlive us. Would you mind reading this page? Oh, sure. So over the years, Sassy had gotten a little slower. Lainey's mom explained, Sassy lives her life as our family's best friend. But she is so special and loves us so much that she ages faster than we do. Dogs stay with us for a while, but then they're needed up in heaven to welcome everyone that comes there. And again, that's the, and that's the end of the page. But that's just, um, you know, that's what I like to think. I mean, they make, that's what they did for me. Um, they're the best greeters. They're so excited. And I like to picture a world where that's what, that's what happens after they're gone. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And I just love how you explain that because, you know, kids don't understand. They're strong and young and healthy and full of energy for so many years. And the older they get, the more they want to play and run with their pets, but they just can't keep up. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's hard for kids to understand. Yeah, they just age faster. And I mean, I think a lot of times, you know, maybe if you're a vet, maybe your kids will be more aware of timelines like that because, you know, it's part of what you do and it's part of maybe dinner conversation or something. But right. I never really thought of it until Leah was just very, she was five at the time and she was just so concerned about me and didn't right. want it to ever happen to anybody ever again yeah. is what she said. And I just, I realized, you know, who does have that conversation? Like nobody really says, you know, Faith, our dog, is aging faster than we are. You know, you just don't until it gets older. And so she just didn't have that perspective. So, you know, I think it's funny because a lot of times people are are getting it for when their pet passes away to help their family. But I do think it's really great before that because I think explaining that that is something that's going to happen and that you need to cherish the days that you have with them. And then also as they get older and they're going to more vet appointments, you know, it helps them understand this is okay. You know, I didn't cause this. This is just part of life. You know, it's, it's part of loving. It is. And saying goodbye is so hard. And we, we sign up for this so voluntarily, uh-huh. don't we? Yeah, uh-huh. It's like we, we bring a new animal into our life, a new companion in our life, and we know mm-hmm. they're, we are going to be heartbroken. For me, it's, it's the love that they give is so worth it. Like It is. Yeah. And I personally have a very small family. I'm actually an only child of two uh-huh. only children. So I'm like very small family. So I think that maybe I was just meant to have lots of dog family <laughs> in addition to my wonderful family that I do have. But Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they really are our family. Yeah. So much so. I remember, I, gosh, my dog Milu passed. I'm going to start crying now. Uh, my dog Milu passed before my daughter was born. Oh, I still miss her. Absolutely. And I've got the best dog now. Oh, absolutely. My, me as well. Yeah. Yeah. They, it doesn't matter. Yeah. There are those special ones that just, and when she passes, oh my gosh, I tell her every day, Lily, you have to be with us forever. <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave us ever. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, so, it's so true. Yeah. So I had my first rescue dog, Max, passed away in 2015. At the, at the time, I had three dogs. So um, they got me through a very rough time in my life when I went through a divorce. They were yeah. kind of my rock. Um, and so losing the first one, Max was devastating. And then Murphy, um, my second rescue passed away in 2018. So, um, it was really weird because he 
passed away after the book was written, Ooh. but I knew it was coming. So he had mm-hmm. congestive heart failure. I knew it was coming. And so this book was sort of made um, with him in mind, although the main character is a girl and it's sassy. We actually attempted to, at first, model the dog, Sassy, after my dog, Murphy, because I knew, you know, he was right. he was winding down. And so we realized, ultimately, that he is the hardest draw- dog to draw. <laughs> and so we, we ventured away from, from doing that. But I still have on my phone a picture of the very first illustration of Sassy. Aww. And it is so funny. And it, it's also really cool, because the, the picture I have... There's a page in the book that is the little girl dressed up like a superhero and the dog is dressed up like a superhero and they're playing. And uh, the very first time that that Alexandra Holmes, who illustrated the book, drew the picture, this page, Mm -hmm. she was doing it, like I had said, could you model it after my dog Murphy? And oh my gosh, it looks like a gremlin. Looking back now, (laughs) that first rendition looks like a gremlin. So we evolved and it looks amazing. Her illustrations are gorgeous. Adorable. And you can tell like, you know, I'm a graphic, I'm a graphic designer, but you can like, so I was lucky enough to have Alexandra, who's another graphic designer in my life as a dear friend. And, um, but you can tell, you know, somebody with, with a good eye designed this because she left enough white space and just beautiful illustrations. Oh, yeah. It is really cute. Yeah. So cute. And uh, she did a great job. So you knew her already. What was the mm-hmm. creative process like to work with an illustrator? Uh, you know, it was it was fine. We worked all of 2018, actually. So 2017, mm. late in the year, is when I started writing. And then 2018... Um, I was starting my own business. So I started, um, my graphic design business in like October ish of 2017 at, at the same time I was writing the book, I was starting my business. And so, so that was kind of keeping me busy after having written it. So it was fine that like Al, you know, Alexandra's process, she goes by Allie. So if I mess up and call her Allie, that's why. Um, but anyway, her process is, you know, she had to, to draw all of these and she hand drew every single one. Mm-hmm. Um, she used, she would know the name. I think they're called Copic markers, but they're special like, you know, right. markers. Anyway, it took, takes a long time each picture. Um, and then you have to do things like, and the other thing is, of course, she's a stay at home mom of two young, awesome kids. So you, she has to fit that in, which I, you know, we, we kind of gave ourselves 2018. I didn't want her to feel stressed and I had other stuff going on. So we took that year to illustrate, but it's interesting because then, you know, she would get some of the illustrations done and then we'd sit together and you would realize, okay, chronologically, these two pictures that she did an amazing draw job drawing. It just so happens this, this is happening on the same day, but I didn't, I didn't tell her, I just said, you know, do a picture of, of, you know, the little girl with Sassy doing this. Do a picture of the little girl with Sassy doing that. Because I'd never done a book before. When you lay it all out, you're like, oh my gosh, this has to be the same day. The child has to be in the same outfit. Right. Stuff like that. You just yeah. realize, okay, we have to kind of tweak it. So it takes time. It took it took us time to get it all finished. So, Right. No, that completely makes sense. And it was totally worth it because this is just yeah, the sweetest did, little book. Yeah, she did a great job. And Wow. Hi, this is Christy. I just want to say that we here at Radiate Wellness hope you're enjoying this podcast. It's free to you, and we hope that you find it informative and inspirational. Heck, even fun. We have just three small asks of you to help us radiate growth. First, please hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. That way, you'll receive a notification every time that we have a new podcast episode out. Next, please give us a thumbs up a like, or a five-star review. If you're feeling inspired, a positive review wouldn't hurt. These two small things will help others find us when they're searching for great podcasts. Finally, please tell your friends about the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Better yet, show them how to find us and how to subscribe. If everyone did that, we would double our audience. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. It, It's really comforting to me. as an adult, and you know, I I know a lot of people that have bought it for adults, even though it is a yeah. children's book, because 
it, it's comforting. It really is. And I'm, I remember when, again, when my dog Milu passed, oh, I was devastated for days and just any kind of comfort um, because our, our, it's like losing a family member, honestly, yeah. like losing a brother, sister, or a child. Right. Yeah. So I, I can imagine this book being a great comfort for people. And where can they get it? So it is available at Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, um, Powell's, which is a great independent oh, yeah. large bookstore um, out in the north uh, northwest. Uh, it's available at Target. And um, gosh, there's a lot of places actually online that it's available. There's a great bookstore in Nashville called Parnassus Books. Oh, I've heard of it. It's, it's available online there. Um, there's a couple local places. I know KD Books and Lee Summit has it um, on the shelf. I know Bar K Dog Bar, they had some Ooh. copies of it to sell. Yeah. So, yeah, and we're local to Kansas City, even though I'm sure your podcast listeners are from all over. But those right. are the couple places here in Kansas City I know that they can get it. And, the, and a couple of the Barnes & Nobles here in town uh, carry it in on the shelves. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine, you know, places like uh, Pet Project. and. Oh, yeah, you know. yeah. It's just getting the word out because nobody knows – you know, it exists. So you just kind of have to get the word out, which is what we're doing. And, and it's funny, I just came back from vacation um, about a month ago, but we took a big road trip. And that's one of the things I did was I took the book with me. Perfect. Because we were going to New Orleans and, and Nashville and a couple places. And so, you know, you just want, and, you know, you want people to know about it. So. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping that people who listen to this podcast, we've got a lot of fans, uh, people who listen will um, go to, is there, did, does it have a website? Do you have a website? Yeah, so Sassy's New Home, it's all like strung together with no apostrophe. So S-A-S-S-I-E-S-N-E-W-H-O-M-E.com mm-hmm. has a website. The great thing about that is, is that there's some resources there. Um, I worked with a child therapist to kind of help me help parents because I get asked so many questions. And so we came up with tips, um, things to do, you know, help your child memorialize your pet, you know, in, in a way that's meaningful. Um, and so we just, we kind of crafted a a little blog post about different things you can do. So there's resources in addition to you being able to get the book there. And, uh, then we also have a Facebook and an Instagram as well. That's just, Um, at Sassy's new home, and it's all strung together. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that you've got the resources for parents. That is Mm -hmm. very, very helpful. Yeah, and I think, you know, it was interesting along the way, writing the book, uh, I actually, you know, this is a unique book in the sense that it actually does have, you know, the dog dying. And so, I mean, it's not... It's not a page where you're seeing the dog dying, nothing like no. that, but it's referred to. Right. And in so many books, it's after, and it's, you know, only dog heaven. And so um, what was really interesting about this book is that we kind of tested it with kids. I have a lot of kids in my life and um, had them all read this for me before it became a book. And I originally had the word passed away. And mm. the kids said, it should be died. I wanted... Like, one of the girls was flipping back Uh through the pages, and she was just trying to, like, clarify. Passed away wasn't as meaningful to her, even though she kind of understood. She wanted clarity, and she wanted to understand exactly what happened. And so we changed, you know, to the fact that, um, you know, this is a very hard day for our family, and Sassy died today. It was Sassy's time to go to heaven. So, um I think that is helpful. Kids do like clarity, and we do uh, tend to tiptoe around those type of things. We tend to sugarcoat them, but kids want the truth. I know, and that's, like like I said, I had a different different term in there, and it was kids that were like, no, you know, this is the word that should should be there. These kids that are like, you know, so much younger than me, but they're so wise. By the time we get to be our age, we know what passed away is. We know <laughs> right. it is going to the great beyond. We know kick yes. the bucket, all of these things. But kids really do need it. Yeah, they need spelled the clarity. Out. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. And I love that story because, I mean, kids will tell you, you know. Oh, they're completely honest. <laughs> and uh, I would imagine this goes over really well with kids. Yeah, they just love funny. it. And it's funny, too, because it's not an everyday read, obviously. Obviously. Um, because it is a, it's a kind of a big topic. Right. However, I kind of am surprised by how many kids tell me and and I talk to and they are reading it often 
after the death of a pet. Interesting. And I think it's just so comforting, and they're asking to read it more. So, so I think it may be the adults that have a harder time, maybe, with right. because they don't want their kids to be sad, but the kids crave that comfort. Um, and so I think that's why, you know, sometimes they'll read the book over and over again, you know. Yeah, I know when my dog Milu died, um, just hearing about dogs, hearing somebody else talking about their dog and everything, it was it was hard for me. And we may project that onto our children. Um, children, they have such clarity themselves. They're like, no, I understand. I, I think it's us who may be over-sentimentalize. Right. Right, and the kids just want straight answers, straight yeah. truth, et cetera. Yeah, and especially, I think, once you explain... Because I just, I don't think they understand that they don't live as long unless you've had that conversation or unless, you know, somehow they've been exposed to that information. It's just their pet. They've loved their pet. And I guess you start to have that conversation as their pet slows down. But it's just nice for them to have a way of of being able to understand um, what they're in for. This is what being a pet owner is like. This is what loving a pet is is part of it you know? you're not going to be around here forever mm-hmm. except for turtles I had somebody <laughs> tell me that I should write a book about turtles but their turtle was 45 I think what like a box turtle yeah oh, name's Henry my gosh. Yeah. and pa- parrots too apparently oh really yeah Live a long time so I mean that is the exception of the rule I guess but I I had no idea. You learn all kinds of things through writing a book and getting to meet people and talk about it. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so it's been such a great pleasure talking to you and talking about Sassy's new home and about dogs. I just Aww. love dogs. I agree. I Well, animals bring so much joy to our life. And, you know, honestly, as we think about how things are uncertain right now, yeah, there's such comfort in having in having animals, you know, to be able to just unconditionally love you and just be there. Yeah. And the dogs don't, the, the, our animals don't freak out over these yeah, they don't things. know what's going on. They don't They're know excited. quarantine. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah but they don't know quarantine. You're they right. They don't know quarantine, you well, know. Um, so it's, it's really nice to come home and you don't have to talk about it with them. Mm-hmm. That's so true. <laughs> So uh, thank you for providing some comfort at this uh, discomforting time. It's thank very you. much appreciated. So we'll put the link to Sassy's new home in the show notes. That sounds great. Yeah, and all your your Twitter and the Facebook handles and Perfect. Instagram and all that. Sounds awesome. And we do have a section on Sassy's new home um, where we talk about different you know media that we've appeared on. So we'll have a little bit about this as well. So Perfect. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna go out there soon. Perfect. Well, thank you again for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.